Hey, hey, Tony Gassy here. Want to pop in? Hey, now I've been noticing that um, my videos, I'm feeling better shooting them at night. So every now and then, if you don't see it in the daytime by like, you know, before 4 p.m. Eastern, then it may be, if I'm shooting that day, it may come around 9, 10 p.m. So understand that. But you know, I wanted to pop on here today and talk to you about I'm reading my messages and all of that and and just remind you that you cannot change a man. You cannot change a man. And you always hear that. Everybody says it. You've heard it a million times. You say it. You're probably preaching it to your friends. And then you go in and you want to be Houdini. You want to try to change a man. You think that he's going to change for you. And here's the thing. You go in there and you give so much of yourself. So you looking cute. You got your butt pads on. You got your lip gloss on. You stretching. You cooking. You put your high voice on trying to sound more feminine. So you talking high giving yourself a headache instead of just talking to your normal voice that may be a little deeper. And so you're doing so much. Now, your mama tell you about them or your friend tell you about them or your ex-boyfriend might tell you about them. And everybody is everybody hating. Don't nobody want to see you happy. This is what you're telling yourself. Don't nobody want to see you happy. Everybody hating. And the man that you got, when you look at his character, his morals, his beliefs, he might be a five out of 10. He might be a five out of 10. Meaning if he need 10 things, he got five of them. And, but you ready for you a man. You ready for you a relationship. And so you ignore the things that really matter. And that's what I keep noticing is women are paying attention to the things that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things and really the the foundation of the relationship the real true belief system the morals the values that this man has the things that really matter you'll overlook that and i was seeing somebody was showing the lyrics of the little nasty song that them women made and in them lyrics it was saying that they need a man who drank who smoke who and do something else i was like wow so you literally just spelled out a grown boy like hey grown boy on aisle five please 500 for me alex grown boy for 500 i'm like wow like who literally says they want a man who smoke eat and get drunk i'm like wow but that's what's going on right now it's like so many women ignoring the red flags ignoring these signs that's showing you this man is not for you now understand this now y'all now you know me and my wife wrote a woman's influence. And this is where it get tough at because a large part of me changed for my wife. And the guy asked me, he said, well, did you change because you wanted to change or did you change because it was your wife? And I said, well, it really was my wife. Like she was the, the deciding factor. But the thing is, is I had to want to change. I had to want to change. And deep down, it was like, I felt like the prodigal son. So I felt like, okay, I'm sleeping around, I'm in the streets hustling, I'm stealing, I'm lying, I'm deceiving. This ain't me. It doesn't feel comfortable. Like I don't feel right. I'm doing stuff that I know I shouldn't be doing and I'm doing it just to get some stripes, just to get some experience. I'm doing it to fit in. 
I'm doing it to be normal. See, I had to realize that God did not call me to be normal. That God did not call me to be average. That nothing about me was called to be average. And I remember all my life I was fighting for average. I could have got straight A's, no A minuses, just like my son. But instead, I settled for A's and B's because I didn't want to be too smart because everybody else was getting C's and D's. And so I didn't want to be too different. I remember when I was young, I can't remember how old I was, but it probably was between like 10 and 12. I remember asking my daddy or asking my parents like, can y'all stay home sometime? Because everybody else don't have a mama and daddy. I'm the only one with a mama and daddy in the stands. And I mean, that's where I come from. And so, and then the, the one of the guys I knew who had his mama and daddy, they couldn't even play sports because it was too expensive for, yeah, for all the kids to play sports. Or maybe the daddy didn't want to take them or something. I don't know. But everybody seemed like Either no parents was in the stands or it was just their mama. And or it was their mama and their stepdaddy. And here I was, like the only one that I could think of that had my biological mama and daddy in the stands. And of course it was a couple others. But if you're playing a game of basketball, you got <clears throat> 20 people there. So if two of us got our mama and daddy in the stands, I'm like, man, come on now. Nah. So I literally felt unrightfully privileged. So when I became a grown man, I was like, man, everybody, you know, everybody hustling. And, and if they not hustling, <clears throat> then they work on a job that is too back breaking. It's too hard. And to do the job, they got to be doing drugs. So literally they'll be <clears throat> hitting them a line, getting them a line in so they could work in that warehouse or they'll be on a pill. So they could work in that warehouse. And I wasn't finna do no drugs because I grew up seeing the effects of drugs and alcohol on a person's life. So I said, man, let me go out here to these streets. And I was in the streets and I just didn't feel right because I knew I knew better. I knew I was raised better. And I knew that I wanted to serve God and live right. And that's honestly why I got married because fornication did not feel right to me. I was living in fornication, I'm like, this ain't right. Like I know I'm supposed to be married if I wanna be sleeping with a woman. So that's why I got married. I wanted to get out of sin. I didn't get married for love because at, at I got married at 23 years old, so I was still too young to process what real love was. So I, I got married out of fear and reverence for God because I didn't want to be in sex sin. And then on top of that, I did feel like my wife was my wife and she had got pregnant. And so a lot of times people hear me teaching about abstinence and they assume that I was abstinent. No, I felt the soul ties. I made the mistake. That's why I teach a different message. That's why I don't say, hey, go fornicate because I fornicated. And I made it. Look at me today. And that's what so many comment warriors want to do. Oh. Oh, well, I know three friends who slept with their husband on the first night. And they are doing fine 30 years later. So you saying you shouldn't be sleeping together on the first night. That is a lie. Because I know three people. I'm like, okay, congratulate. Here, here go a cookie. Here, here go your cookie. All right, congratulations. Because you know three people. You know three couples. So you know six people. And okay, all right, I'm going to give you one more. You know ten people. And a lot of times what the comment warriors want to use is several. I know several people. You a lie. You a lie. I already know you're lying because you ain't say no no several. You know what several is? Sound like seven. Do you know seven couples? No, you don't. You might know one. You might know two. And the other ones you talking about, you watching 90 Day Fiance. You watching reality show people you don't even know. People getting paid to, to get on TV and tell lies. 
You don't even, you don't even know what they talking about. A man called me the other day about a TV show. I said, man, I don't think I'm interested in no raggedy TV because it, it's just too much tomfoolery on there. And so I say, but hey, I don't think I'm interested. And so I look at them and I say, I'm shooting a video. What you doing? What you saying? Good night? Yeah. Oh, you going to bed? All right. Say, hey, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Good night, buddy. Good night. Love you. Close that door all the way. So here I am. Oh Lord, I said close that. Hey Tatum, you ain't close that door. You gotta make sure it click. Turn the handle and make sure it click. Push it all the way. Now let the handle up. All right, good, good. Y'all gotta forgive me now. Son, going to bed. I'm gonna try to get my video in for the game. Come on, the game I want to see. I'm about to come on. So here I am. People say, oh, they think I was abstinent. No, I wasn't abstinent. I was in sin. That's why I changed my life. That's why I teach as much as I teach because I've made all the mistakes. I made the mistakes with the hope that you won't have to keep making the mistake. You can learn from it. And them soul tight how you sit to your stomach. It how you going crazy. It how you addicted to the wrong things. Everything but love. And I, I just, it didn't sit right with my spirit. I said, I, ain't, I know that there's more for me. I know I'm living beneath my potential, but I know that I cannot receive everything that God has for me unless I'm in right standing with God because God don't bless mess. God don't bless mess. And see, some people don't understand when I say God don't bless mess. Oh, yes, he does. What do you mean God don't bless mess? Every, everybody life is a mess. That's who God want to help. When I say God doesn't bless mess, what I mean is when you willfully sinning when you living in a mess intentionally God's not going to rain blessings down on you when you're not living right because God is not the author of confusion so who who bless you when you ain't living right willfully intentionally sinning I ain't talking about you fall short of the glory of God I'm talking about you have chosen a life of sin all right, Bonnie and Clyde on the run. And so God not finna bless that because God sows on good ground. God, he water good ground. He ain't gonna bless that. See, the adversary send you blessing. You on your bike? Mm, on your bike, uh. You slide down the pole, uh. You doing acrobatic, uh, uh, uh. Uh, every day, every day, uh. So now guess what? You get a promotion. You get a raise. You thanking God. God ain't have nothing to do with that. God ain't have no hand in that. Lord, I just want to thank you through the good and the bad. I know I'm not perfect. God, like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, come here. She's out there talking to, <laughs> I ain't have nothing to do with that. She don't to see what's finna come. Hey, call her mama and tell her mama to get her a call and let her know that she need to get her life in order. And that's that what God and Jesus are up there doing. God ain't had nothing to do with that. Why are you in your fornication? That's what the adversary gave you that job. You know why the adversary gave you that job? Because your boss worked for the adversary. Your boss worked for Satan. Your boss don't serve God in spirit and in truth. So your boss like you. Your, your spirit vibe with your boss. Because both of y'all in fornication. Or, or, or your boss might be in adultery if they marry and your spirit vibe with them because you had that fornicative spirit on you. So I'm going to give you a raise. You see what I'm saying? See, a lot of people don't understand when you see people out here in the public shining, it's because a lot of people who are gatekeepers, a lot of people who sign checks, not working for God. They're working for the devil. So that's why you see some people will come and say, well, Tony, why, why you don't have a much larger following? Because I work for God. This ain't, it, it, we, our society praises ignorance over intelligence. Ignorance over intellect. Our society want to party and have a good time. They don't want to get sat down and get talked to and get slapped in the face with the truth over and over. That's a small percentage of people. People want to come on YouTube and, and just laugh and just watch pranks and just 
watch people ball out, live their life, you know, shopping, buying cars, and showing their house, and showing all their business, doing all these vlogs, because people know when you expose yourself like that, and you show all your business, they know that why they got to watch you shine, that one day they're going to get to watch you fall. They're going to get to watch you fail. And they're going to be with that popcorn. <laughs> and hit the tap the screen two times to rewind 10 seconds. Oh, oh they broke up. Oh. They know they're going to get to watch you fall. So that's why they're going to watch you shine. They're going to watch you do all your shopping, do all your vlogs. And then one day they know you're going to be on the... <laughs> You know, I just want to be honest and transparent with you all. And then they know you got to come on there with that honest and transparent. And that's when they're going to get a, they tan that popcorn. They're going to uh, choke on a kernel. Because why? You can put all your business out there. But when it's come sit over here, sit down and get talked to with the truth. Don't nobody want to hear that. Don't nobody. Oh, he judging me. He judging me because, and a lady told me yesterday, try to be empathetic uh, with the sinner or with the fornicator or something, or with the other woman. She was telling me be empathetic with somebody. All right. So what you going to ask Satan to do? Uh, can you turn down the heat? You're going to wish somebody would have hollered at you. You're going to wish somebody would have got you right, got you in line. When your life in shambles, when your life in shambles, you're going to be like, man, I wish somebody would have told me to get out of that relationship. So let me help you understand what I'm trying to tell you. Is see, I change. And yes, my wife played a role in my change. But deep down, I desired change. I wanted change. You can't change a man that don't believe in God. You can't change a man that don't fear it, don't fear God. You can't change a man that don't believe finding your purpose is a real thing. You can't change a man that don't believe that it's something wrong with smoking. You can't change a man that don't believe it's something wrong with getting drunk. You can't change a man that don't believe it's something wrong with pornography, nasty movies. You can't change a man that does not believe what he is doing is out of line. You're not going to be able to change no grown, musty, stinking, over half grown man. You're not going to be able to change. And this is what you got to understand. So let me tell you. Let me tell you now. I had to take a deep breath. I just finna eating. So I'm stomach a little. I'm trying to you know, hold his stomach in now. Let me tell you something. You got 12 months. You got 12 months. You 18. The Bible them promise you 70 years. So from 18 to 70, you got the opportunity to date 52 men if you go the whole 12 months. Now, listen to me. If you get this knowledge in you, you're not gonna have to go the whole 12 months. You're gonna be able to, you're gonna be able to go one to three months. So that's gonna increase your rate of return because you're gonna be able to now get through four to twelve men a year and have not slept with now one of them. So you ain't lost nothing. Because it might take you a hundred men, a hundred dates to meet the one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You don't want to hear that now. Nah. So guess what? You got to increase your rate of return. So you got to be able to have the knowledge, know what the red flags are, know what you stand for, know what you believe in, so you can recognize it. See, some see if 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 I'm a woman and I sit down with a man and we at a date. So yeah, so um, what do you think about the election? Well, you know, me personally, like, 
I don't really believe in God, and so it's like they keep talking about, you know, Christian this, Christian that, Joe Biden Christian, and Trump be having people in the office praying. I feel like that's just going to ruin the country. So, like, me personally, I don't believe in God. If I'm a woman and I hear a man say he don't believe in God, and I'm a Christian woman, or he ain't no Christian, <laughs> all right, all right, check, please, check. <clears throat> I just... It's everything we're going through right now. I mean, I got to put my mask back on. I put that mask back on. It's just like my throat is starting to feel a little. <coughs> and I just don't want. I don't want to be the contagion. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming up with something. Check, please. One night. One night. Now, nah, you got to waste no more time. Because what's what he just told you, your foundation is not his foundation. <coughs> got to go. Got to go. You see what I'm saying? But y'all will hear that. Oh, okay. Oh. Hmm, this ought to be fun. Little project. I get the I mean, Jesus did say win the souls of the lost, so like who am I? Like Jesus let harlots wash his feet. This guy, tall, dark, and handsome, just doesn't believe in God. That's just a small amount of work. So now you sit there, you to convince yourself that God called you to marry to date, to convert, to win the soul of this grown, musty man who is making a decision every other night not to shower. And that is why he musty. And you think that you're going to convince him to choose Jesus and the cross when you can't even get him to take a good quality bath. And so here's the thing. Now, I'm just not, I'm not literally saying the man obeys. But what I'm trying to say is, these men make choices every day. And it's little stuff that you, his mama, his sister, his boss cannot get him to do. It's little stuff that people who he know and love cannot get him to change. And you think you finna lead him to Christ. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What he finna do is try to nail you to the cross or that bed. Remember I told y'all another video that was my homeboy used to say, boy, I nailed it to the cross. Like, what let me get around you. I'm gonna get around you. But what the world? Don't be using the cross like that. Don't be that blasphemy. But that's what a lot of men trying to do. You think you holy, sister? You think you got it going on? You think you classy? Because you abstinent right now. And then a lot of y'all, you sitting there on a date, and you'll tell the man you celibate. Well, I've just decided to be celibate. And he's sitting there like, she don't even know that it's celibate. C-E-L-I-B-A-T. I know she not celibate because she don't even know the word. She said celibate. What is that? So a lot of y'all ain't even Googled the word. Ain't even Googled the word to see that's what a priest is. You abstinent. You're not celibate. You abstinent. You abstaining. See, so now he know he could he could knock you off your square. Now he know he can get you where he want to get you because you don't even know the definition of what you say you is. And you just told him on the first night and that wasn't none of his business. You could have had cobwebs down there and he wouldn't have been none the wiser had you kept your mouth shut. But you tell him all your business. So now he know, all right, <laughs> I'm going to get her. Get her before she knows she can be singing the microphone. And next thing you know, a few weeks in, you down there. <laughs> you all on all kind of microphone. Why? Because you're talking too much and you think you could change a man. He done told you he don't believe in God. Sometimes, okay, he believe in God, but then he may say he believe in God and he Christian, but he don't believe that the Bible is literal when it's talking about fornication. That he don't really think fornication is sin because he don't think God will put us through that kind of punishment when we have a desire for that. He'll hit you with that one. The other one, he don't think nothing wrong with smoking weed. The other one, he don't think nothing wrong with getting drunk as long as he in the house. He get drunk. Yeah, he in the house. But then you in the house. So what he doing? Conor McGregor and you. And you like, oh, 
I thought he didn't. You know, well, I didn't think it would be a problem because he in the house, like he said. Yeah, he in the house. When you out, tearing you up because why? Because he got vices and bad habits. And so this is what you got to understand. He don't have to be perfect. But you got to know that he has a heart for change. That he has a desire to change. He has a desire to grow. That's what you got to know. Like you got to see him striving. Like when you talking, his it should feel like a perfect picture. Like he painting the perfect picture. And then when you watch his actions, it should look pretty perfect. It should look like he doing everything right because you know he's not doing everything right, but you shouldn't be able to directly see that, nor should he be telling you. See, some men tell you stuff to see if you're going to settle for it. They'll tell you they smoke like a chimney. They'll tell you they drink like a fish. They'll tell you they curse like a sailor. They'll tell you that they take bird baths and that they're going to want you on the microphone and it's musty. They will let you know to see if you're going to settle, if you're going to put up with it. So when you hear or see what you need to hear or see, you got to go. That's how you get through this. And y'all could stop getting caught up dealing with a man a year, two years three years, four years, and then coming to me, year five, six, seven through 11. So I'm, I just don't understand. Like, am I not wife material? Like, why won't he marry me? Uh, he don't believe in marriage. He told you in the first three dates that he think marriage is a sham of the government. And you let that go in one end, out the other year, yeah. Cause you thought some walk, you were finna put some walk on him and he was gonna be putting a, a, a dress on you and walk you down the aisle. Come on now, come on. You got to wake on up, you got to wake on up. And you got to realize, you got to realize like, look, my, my wife ain't give me long to change, yeah. Yeah, she wanted me to change. She wanted me to grow, but she wasn't finna give me loan. She wasn't finna give me loan because guess what? This is what, this is what I come here to tell y'all tonight. Is that it don't take a man five years to change. It don't take a man three years to change. It, it don't take a man two years to change. If a man want to change, let me tell you what change do. That's how change happens. That's how change happens. Because you know what change is? Change is a decision. See, when you make a decision, you then will be confronted with a choice. So if I make a decision that I'm not going to cheat on my wife, the next day I'm going to see a woman that looks cheatable. And now I have a choice. Do I choose to cheat? Or do I choose to stay faithful? That's why you have decisions, choices, and consequences. Or choices, decisions, and consequences. So first you got to decide. So really the decision comes first because you got to decide that you want to change. Next you're going to be confronted with some temptation. And this way you got to make a choice. And when you make that choice, you actually deciding again to stick to what you said you would do then comes the consequences so by me being faithful now here comes the favor by me being faithful here comes favor and so i get the favor after being faithful and now when i feel that favor i don't want to feel what cheating feels like i don't want to feel like feel what life feels like to be outside of god's favor and it's because I want it to change. I want it to be in right standing with my savior, with my creator. And because of that, that's how a woman's influence was able to work in my life. Now, see, here's the thing. See, a man wanting to change and a woman's influence, it goes hand in hand. 
it goes hand in hand. They're not interchangeable. It's not one or the other. See, some 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 women want to say, well, oh, you can't change a man. You're not changing him. You're influencing him by what you stop, what you allow, and what you reinforce. And that's what you got to understand. So he can want to change. A man can want to change all he want to. But if you finna bust a wild on, drop it like a hot, apple bottom jean, if you finna do that, guess what? He can want to change all he want to and he finna be right down there. Come on, girl. Ugh, come on. He finna hop right on top of you. You hear me? Because if your influence ain't where it need to be, he's not going to be that strong. Because he want to change, but really, we need accountability. Humans need accountability. Even as a woman, it could be something that you want to change. You could say, listen, I want to stop spending so much money and maxing out credit cards and going into debt and then have to pay all this interest for this bag I wanted. I want to stop doing that. But now if your friend or you get with somebody and they're like, girl, you only live once. Go ahead and shop. That's what your, and if you get with a man and he say, listen, you live one time. That's what a credit card is for. Who told you to pay off your credit cards and cut them up? <laughs> Dave who? If you don't get out of here with that nonsense, you live one life. YOLO. Girl, go ball out. Go live your life because tomorrow ain't promised. So what is that empty credit card going to benefit you if your tomorrow ain't promised? And then here you will. Mm, you know what? Ooh. I felt the spirit on me. That's why God created the men and women who created these banks to give us credit to live our life because God says tomorrow is not promised. So that's, that's scripture, what you just said. <laughs> Louis Vuitton, here I come. And so now you going, you want it to change. You knew right from wrong. You know the Bible also say the borrower become servant to the lender. But you forgot that scripture. Oh, you forgot that. Why? Because the person you with is not holding you accountable. They pushing you to your vices. So guess what? Like my wife, she'll be saying, she'll look at something and she'll say, mm, this is so nice, but it's expensive. Now it's certain times of the year, season where I'll be like, go ahead and get it. It's all right. Go ahead and get it. And then she'll get it, and then a week later, or next week, I'm like, I'll be thinking, man, if we ain't spend that, boy, we could pay this bill. And so at other times, like right now, we redoing this here house. She'll look at something that's nice. Mm, yeah, that's nice. Mm, yeah, that's that's out of our budget. Ooh, woo, that's when you got play money. We ain't know. And she don't say nothing. She don't say like, oh, you're so cheap. Or nothing like that. She's like, yeah, that's whew, that's play money. That was when you really got a bag. Like, yeah, such and such got it. Oh, yeah, his man make, her man make 40 million a year. Okay, yeah, that's why she got it. Your man don't make 40 million. So, yeah, we're going to leave it right on the people's website. We leave it right in their store. You see what I'm saying? So, I don't reinforce frivolous spending. So, guess what? It don't get done. But if I say, get it. Go ahead and get that. I ain't worried about that, girl. God got us. Get that Louis Vuitton. You know what I'm saying? If I say that and it ain't the season, guess what? She still will get it. Because I'm her accountability. The same thing, vice versa. So when I want to go to the streets, I went to the streets. And I knew it wasn't right. But my, my, my cousins was out there. My homeboys was out there. They was either selling it or smoking it. I, didn't, I wasn't going to smoke it, so I'm like, man, let me be somewhat kind of normal, so let me sell it. So I went out there, and I remember my cousin, he said, hey, cuz, man, I hey, had such and such in town for the concert, because he used to book shows. Had such and such in town for the concert, man, and, and I got by, uh, I got a little bit left over. I ain't need all of the weed, and I got a little bit left over. I said, oh, yeah, I said, cuz, what you want, you know what I'm saying, what you want for it? He said, man... Give him 180. I'm like, all right, I get that. Gave him the 180 dollars. So now I got me, a, I got me a few, few grams. I'm finna go sell. I'm finna go sell. Go, go and flip it. Now after I flip it, I'm finna go up, go get my little bit more, double up. 
But I got that little bit, told my wife, we had just got married two months ago. Told my wife, she was like, huh? You did what? I thought we talked about this. I told you that I refused to be with a man that's going to live an illegal lifestyle. I told you such and such baby daddy just went to prison for seven years for doing the same thing that you're doing. I refused for that to be our case. And I was, and, and I remember when I told my cousin, I was like, hey, cuz, like, man, my wife really ain't with that, bro. He said to me, he said, cuz. She ain't gonna be saying that when that money coming in that house. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you right. So I went home and my wife told me what, you know, what lit read. And I was like, you ain't gonna be saying that when the money coming out. She was like, all right, get this purse. I'm finna, okay, all right, I'm gonna show you what, how I'm gonna be in. She wasn't saying them. Okay, okay, well. All right, well, it's been nice. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm out. She was leaving me. She was leaving me. I tried to tackle her. I tried to hold her. And she was leaving. Guess what? This is a pivotal point. This is why I say it go together. See, you can't change him. He got to want to change, but you influence the change. So deep down, I want to change, but I still was doing wrong. But it was her standing her ground. Now, listen here. If she... Would have said, oh my goodness, I, what am I going to do with you? <sighs> I love me some you. Oh, you get on my nerves. Hurry up and just sell it and you just be done. Oh my goodness. And then I would have, girl, come here, girl. <laughs> girl, come here. Hey, hey, girl, come here. And then she, <laughs> get off me. <laughs> And then she would have did that right there. Guess what? I'd be Bumpy Johnson today. I'd be Frank Luger today. I'd have been all in Mexico with Escobar kids. Hey. Summer Seeker Laga Liga. I believe, 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 believe. El Plano. Leave, leave. I'd have been all down there in Colombia. You hear me? Had she condoned it. And see, that's what's happening right there. Women think that staying with a man and forgiving him and okaying what he's doing even though it's again it's one of your deal breakers women think that's going to influence him to change women think a man gonna be like wow she really love me man she a ride or die i'm finna change for her absolutely not he finna be like oh yeah she with it okay all right hey 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 my chick just said it's cool. She just said it's whatever. Hey, I'm giving a whole pound, bro. I know I just had got seven grams, but I want a whole pound. Hey, she said it's cool. So now he all in. If he doing fraud, hey man, get us some more social security numbers. Hey, go, hey, talk, hey. Don't your cousin work at the nursing home? Man, have her go in the records and get us all the old people social security numbers. I just talked to my girl, man. She said I could hit two more licks. So let's go on and do it. So now he all in. You think you supporting him. You think you finna love him to change. No. Boo-boo the fool. No. He finna to run it up. And then next thing you know, they finna be kicking in your door. They finna be kicking in your door. You hear me? And your life is on the line. And see, that's why my, my wife wasn't with that. She was like, I'm not finna have my dough kicked in. I ain't finna have my dough kicked in. I'm not finna I'm not finna be, you know, coming out the schoolhouse with you and then the police pull up with a warrant for your arrest and now my son, two years old, three years old, got to see his daddy get put in handcuffs, get put in the back of the car. Absolutely not. So I, I say, look, I, I'm trying to, you know, be a lawyer. I'm trying to sell it to him. I'm trying to Persuade. I'm like, so, so, you ain't gonna be acting like when the money coming in. She was like, I say, so, you wanna be broke? I'm making $8.50 an hour. You can't work because you got to be at the hospital every single day with our son. You don't want me to go out here and sell a little bit of weed. It's almost legal. Everybody's smoking. They about to legalize it. So, I'm gonna just be able to have the best of the best and be selling it legally in a few weeks. 
It still ain't legal. This was 2007. It's 13 years later. It still ain't legal. But I tried to sell her that dream. She was like, nope, 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 nope. Because on her end, it was like, listen, it's already bad enough. I'm a Christian and let you talk me into the bed, had me in fornication, sin against God. Now I get pregnant. I get pregnant out of wedlock. Yeah, you take and marry me at five months pregnant, but I'm still disowned because my mom and daddy come from Jamaica to put me in school in America to give me a better opportunity, a better chance at life. And here I am, a sophomore, junior in undergrad, and I'm pregnant. Married and pregnant. And so on top of having conceived in fornication against my beliefs and against the goal of what I'm supposed to be working toward, you want to go and say, oh, you want to go out here and say, oh, and live a illegal lifestyle. And so this kind of, she didn't say any of that, but that's what her eyes said. That's what her action said. And that's what she said in much less words. So I was like, man. So when she got up to leave, this is where I wrote about the 72-hour rule. If you read this book, a lot of y'all don't read, but if you read the book, you read about the 72-hour rule. She left, and I didn't know where she went. I went to my homeboy house. I'm sitting out there. I'm calling, 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 calling. I remember on a movie one time. The man called 88 times. So I said, okay, let me call 88 times. It's crazy where we get our life lessons from. I said, I'm going to call her 88 times. So I'm just calling. It rained the voice, call again. Rain the voice, call again. Rain the voice, call again. I think back then it used to be where, where you turn the music on, turn your favorite song on, and you talk over it. Let's get married. And it's playing Jagged Edge. And she, hi, you've reached Cherie. I'm unavailable for your phone call. But if you would leave me your name and your number, I'll give you a call. I probably heard that thing. I heard that thing so many times, and I'm just stressed. I'm like, where is she at? Is she with another man? She, where is she at? She, she done went back to her ex. And then finally, her uncle called me, and me and him get into it. I, he ended up hanging up the phone. I couldn't reach her. I, I went back to the apartment and didn't want to be there by myself. I packed, my, I packed up all my clothes and all my jerseys because I used to wear jerseys back then. And went to my mama's house. My mom and my sister were living together in an apartment. I went to their house and I was just on the couch. And I spent the whole day there and I was just cold. I was sick to my stomach. And then finally she answered the call. And she answered the call and I just, my heart hit my toe. I couldn't believe she answered that phone. And she told me, she was like, listen, I'm going to give you one more chance. But this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to get anger management for putting your hands on me, trying to hold. I ain't really put my hands on her, but I, when she tried to leave, I tried to bear hug her. I tried to hold her. And she ain't want that. And I see a lot of men, they, see, I ain't, I ain't do that because I don't come from that in my past. So I wasn't trying to go there, but I was trying to hold her. And she was saying, don't even hold me. Don't even hold me. Don't don't touch me if I say I'm leaving. She said, you got to get anger management. Translation. Life coaching with my dad. She said, you got to get out the street, stop selling her up, so, and you got to cut off those friends that got you in the streets, that's influencing you like that, and you got to get back in the church. Those were her stipulations. So I said, okay, hey, whatever you want. I got you, whatever you want. I still wasn't ready to change. I was ready to change, but I wasn't all the way there. I was mad. I was angry. I'm like, you got the audacity to try me. You want to get tough. You want to play tough. You want to act bad. I'm finna get you back and cheat on you. And that's what a lot of men come to do. They'll beg you, beg you, beg you back just to get the last lick. Just to get the last laugh. And in part of me, that's what I was coming back to do. But guess what? Because I remember on the way home, it was a lady. And she was not a trite though. But I was just so hurt. My ego was so hurt. I waved her down. And was like, hey, pull over. And when we pulled over and we got out the car, I looked at her. I said, what am I doing? This woman looked like Kevin Hart. It, it, was a, it was a woman, but she looked like Kevin Hart. So that's not a good thing for a woman. That might be a good thing. I don't know how he look as a man, but I don't want no woman to look like Kevin Hart. And I was like... 
what am I doing? So I just got the number. I had no intentions of calling. I had no intentions of calling, but I did it for my ego. Now see, listen here. I'm telling you something that you wouldn't know so that you could walk through the mind of a man. Don't be in my comments. Oh, I cannot believe you did that. How dare you? For one, I was 23 years old. Two, you would not notice if I was not telling you this. So don't be using what I'm telling you against me because I could just fake like I'm perfect like a lot of these men do and not expose to you the real of a man. I get tired of them women that take something I told them and want to use it again. Oh, listen to me. So that's what I did. I ain't called her later. Or I might have called her right in the car, but I never called her again. And, but see, listen, I was getting ready to try to get back. I, my ego was hurting. I wanted to get her back for being tough, for trying to leave me. Oh, you're going to leave me? So, but then when I got home that night, see, this is when God is in the mix. When God ain't in the mix, you don't have that extra help. So, but see, when you know God, you got prayer. So my wife was praying. I know her mama was praying. I know, I know everybody who knew her was praying. So when I got home that night, I went on there. We made on up. And I said, hey, let's go get us some Taco Bell. We went back outside to go get us some Taco Bell. I walked to my parking spot. And my, I, my car wasn't there. I was like, oh, man, I must have parked over there. I'm looking around. I'm like, where I parked at? Man, I, done, I just, my head was everywhere. I done parked, I don't know where I parked at. I looked down at the ground, it's glass on the ground. I said, hold on now, what this is? This is like a thick window. Man, somebody, window done got bust. When they clicking on my lock button, I ain't hear no noise. I'm hitting, I'm tearing the button up. I'm hitting the alarm sound. Come to find out, My car was gone. My car was gone. They had them bust the window, but I used to leave a key in the car. Yeah, that's how that's how fast and reckless I was moving. I used to leave a key in the car just in case I had to hit and run or in case I had to be on a high speed chase because I was out there in the streets. So I wanted to be in a situation where if I got to go, I just could hop in the car, too, be just be gone. My car was gone. I broke down crying. That was a lesson that I learned about insurance, too, because I had to the barely legal insurance, the one that you just got to have to get your registration and, uh, you know, get a life, have a whatever, get a registration for the car. So I was paying $75 a month. Probably should have been paying like 150 to 300 or whatever because of a red car and I was 23. So my insurance probably would have been sky high. So I was paying $75 a month, the barely legal, no, uh, what you call it? Comprehensive collision. So whatever it's called for theft wasn't on my insurance. Called insurance. <laughs> All right, sir. Well, yeah. Well, oh, you call. Oh, you you call us <laughs> Wow, sir. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, well, unfortunately, you just have PIP on here. I don't even know if that's what it was called, but it was the barely legal insurance. So we're not gonna be able to do anything for you. When I tell you, I cried like a baby. So I was coming back and my heart still wasn't all the way right. And God allowed me to get touched. See, God didn't touch me. See, what you got to realize, God didn't touch Job. Satan touched Job. But God will allow you to be touched when he needs you to get the message because he knows that in your heart, you're anchored at the spirit. He knows he has an anchor in you. Because the Bible say, train him up in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So God knew that if, if my back got broke, I was going to be in his hospital. And so that night, that was the straw that broke my camel, that broke the camel's back. See, my wife leaving me for them three days was not enough. It wasn't enough because I wasn't scared of a woman. I wasn't, I wasn't finna change just for no woman. I had too much ego for that. But then when I got robbed and I lost that prized possession that I was putting so much into. And if you think about this and you stop looking where you could argue at, because right now you're looking for something to condemn me by. If you stop and just clear your mind and you think 
Think about the thing that is in between you and your man other than a woman. It may be his it may be his car. It may be his job. It may be his drug. It may be his music. It may be his video game. It may be his friends. It's, it's a lot of times it's something else that's in between you and your man. See, for me, it was that car at the time because it was an Impala on 22 inch rims. And it was only two years old. It was a 05 and we was in 07. So here I am, a young black man, 23 years old, and I got a car that's only two years old and it got 22s on it. So I'm riding nicer than anybody else that's living a legal lifestyle. Technically, I was still a legal lifestyle because it didn't come from drug money. It came from refund check from college. So that was still legal money when I got in the rims. So here I was, I was on uh, my high horse. I, I was ready to cheat. I was, getting, I was ready to cheat because I'm at the light on them 22s with no tent. I'm at the light, I'm looking around. And, I, and, it, and, and it'll be women. And I was like, now a lot of them will be hood be little hood rat and so they like them 22s but they were throwing no one was throwing themselves because they like a man who looked like he got money now back in that day i used to go to wachovia i had wachovia bank and wachovia used to let you take a hundred dollars out wachovia what used to let you that's why they even went out of business now because they had too many of me wachovia would let you spend four hundred dollars into the negative and you have zero dollars in your account. So I used to be at Wachovia ATM taking a hundred dollars out of there. Every chance I get. And then once you hit 400, they'll shut you off. So I ain't have a dollar. All my money was spent. But I'm on them 22s. When I could have put that refund check in my bank account. And been living out of that refund check. It was only $2,200. But I could have been living out of that. I bought 22s. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand where I'm talking to you today. This is where I come from. But what you have to realize is the combination. You got to understand the sauce in the pot. You got to understand the ingredients in here. So a lot of y'all ever told me, how you change, how you change, how you change? Listen, it wasn't just me. It was my love for God. See, I ain't changing my own will because we don't have a will to change. If we could live reckless, if we could do what we want to do and get away with it, we're not going to change. I changed for God and my wife. So if you ain't got that recipe to where you got a man who fears something bigger than you, bigger than him. And he also respects you because you respect yourself. If you let him slide over and over and over and not, I'm not talking about slide like you're not arguing about him leaving his underwear in the floor or leaving his plate on the table. Like that's petty stuff. You shouldn't be making a big deal about that. And some of y'all make a big deal about that. You want to you want to knock down, drag out argument about him leaving his plate on the table or leaving lights on or got the TV playing while he's not in the room. But then you want to stay after he cheat, after he verbally abused him. You want to stay after he physically abused, you want to stay. And then all your anger that you bottled up from being cheated on and stand, you take that out by that plate he left on the table. You see what I'm saying? That's how a lot of people live in. That's how a lot of people live and you can't, you got to make sure you ain't living like that. So what you got to understand is this right here. When my wife, she looked at me and she seen this here thing. She said, okay, yeah, we married. It's only been two months. Got married in March, March 30th. This was like June when I went to the streets. So you got April, May, June. So it had been like two and a half months we had been married. We just got married. Her friends looking at her crazy because how did this happen to Cherie? The smartest girl I know, the most voted, most successful, most likely to succeed, smartest in the grade, smartest in college. How did this happen to Cherie? Beautiful, smart, articulate. How did she get pregnant? And you have loose booty 901. Sleeping with a different man every night, seven men a week, and 
a baby ain't sniff her womb. Ain't no one nip pregnant. And then you got the good girl who just with one dude that she done opened her heart to and have an unprotected sex and she get pregnant. So her parents looking at her crazy. Her friends looking at her crazy. So with all of that on her back, with all that pressure on her, you would think that she would try to save face and, and make it look like everything is perfect. You would think that she would just cry and just suck it up and just deal with it because she doesn't want anybody to be able to say, I told you so. I told you you failed. I told you you made a mistake. I told you. But instead of her worrying about that, she said, I'm, I'm out of here. Because they wanted her to leave anyway. They, they, they was there for her. They were there for her. They probably were hoping it'll end. And she probably knew that deep down. So her family was a refuge. Anything that ain't had nothing to do with me, oh, they was ready to be there. But see, God knew what man did not know. But see, this is what you got to understand. If your man ain't me, see, you got to see what I'm doing today. So that's why I always tell you, don't look at what my wife did with me and say, oh, well, I'm going to do the same thing for my man. You got to understand the calling on his life. If he ain't called to heights like this to influence and, and reach millions of people, then you may not be graced to go through the trenches, to be in the trenches with him like my wife was graced to be in the trenches with me. See, she was graced to be in the trenches, but even though she was graced, she didn't have to be there too long. She, she checked me one time in marriage, and that was about hustling. It wasn't about verbal abuse. It wasn't about physical abuse. It wasn't about um, cheating. It wasn't about none of that. It was about hustling. So you can't compare apples to oranges. Yo, man. Oh, oh my goodness. And then you said, well, you know what? Cherie Gaskins gave Tony Gaskins another chance. You know, I'm just going to put the ice on here and I'm just going to call on the Lord and just, I'm going to tough this one out. That's not the same thing. That didn't happen to my wife. She didn't go through that. Okay, understand that. So don't compare apples to oranges now. And then your man say his purpose is to win the National Gaming Society. He want to win the video game tournament. We not called to the same thing. So you're not, you're not going to be graced to stand by the side of a man who feel like his purpose is to win the video game tournament. Now, if he want to win the video game tournament so he can make enough money so he can open a community center so he could keep kids off the streets and they could go in there and they could get tutoring and then after getting tutoring, they could play video game. Now, that's different. That's a purpose. If, if he called to just working on somebody else's job, that's not going to impact the world. If he don't feel a calling, if you don't sense a calling that he feel he called to something greater, something that's going to impact a life, even if it's one life, even if he big brother, big sister program, he start, even if, whatever it, it need to be purpose based for you to be there with him and hold him accountable and help push him into greatness. If, if he's just trying to be average, mediocre, you see what I'm saying? So don't compare what my wife did with me to what you're doing in your relationship if you don't sense this man wants to change and he wants to grow and he wants to be the best man he could be and he wants to live the life that God has destined and called him to live. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference. Don't compare apples to oranges. So understand this now. My wife took me back. She ain't never had to leave me again because I realized then I love God. God allowed me to get touched. This time they touched my car. The next time they might touch my life. So it was a wake up call. It was a series of, uh, what did the, the, the series of un miss, uh, unfortunate events? That's what it was. And it all culminated together. And that's what led to change. God in the midst, a strong woman, and a desire to change. Hey, this one, guys, and I got to go almost at 60 minutes. I'm done, baby. My wife just put my son down. Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.